seafood. It's one of the towering pillars of our Australian culinary reputation. A reputation that's recognised throughout the world for its sensational taste and sizzling innovations. But there's more to great seafood than just what you see on your plate. And you're about to dive deep into the full story of how it gets there. I'm Andrew Weddinghouse. I've spent the past two decades fishing for fun on screen, yours and mine. Now I'm getting serious, teaming up with some of Australia's toughest professional fishing crews and introducing them to some of the country's most creative chefs. Together we'll sail Australian waters from north to south to show you the whole amazing journey from ocean depths to the heights of culinary delight in each delicious adventure of seafood escape. In the Arafura Sea, off the coast of the Northern Territory's remote Arnhem Land, we're about to join a very unusual fishing operation. Spanish mackerel are a delicious fish to eat. But who catches them? Where do they come from? And how do they make it to the restaurants around Australia? Well, on this episode of Seafood Escape, we're about to find out. We're in the Wessel Islands, where we've come with the permission of the traditional landowners to spend a few days aboard the mackerel line fishing vessel, Wildcard. This crew spends about eight months of the year fishing at sea in the Gulf of Carpentaria, then welcomes guests aboard when Wildcard turns into a luxury adventure cruiser for a shorter tourist season. Juanita Davy is co-owner of this double enterprise. And today, she's welcoming Sydney chef Colin Barker to see how the mackerel he serves in his boathouse restaurant is brought out of the ocean in these fishing dories. Each year, wildcard skipper Bruce Davey tows this string of dories more than 2,500 kilometres from Cairns to this part of the top end as his crew chase mackerel schools all the way across the Gulf of Carpentaria. We were up here at the Wessel Islands and uh, I've got Cole from the Boathouse restaurant in Sydney now. He's a great chef, brilliant at seafood, and we're up here and we're with the boss himself, or maybe not the boss himself. The boss is out there in one of the dinghies. She's fishing, but uh, we've got Bruce here from Wildcard, and five of the dories are working. These grounds at the back here for mackerel, Spanish mackerel in particular, and at the moment they've landed about 40. And we've got two guys out there, three girls. Women are far better workers. If you get the right women and you train them well, they've got this competitive bloody instinct to try and be the best. The fishing industry's contracted from over 125,000 licenses 25 years ago. They are currently, you know, just a bit over 9,000. So the, the industry around Australia has gone through a lot of pain to restructure to ensure that all our fisheries are sustainable. So we know we can come out with a renewable resource it's the same amount every year and everyone's happy. In fact, I've worked for you to catch that back for me. Yeah. That's a pretty honourable job to have. And with the dories now coming in to offload their catches, the really serious work of that job is about to start. The crew are bringing the mackerel in now. They've been out there for a couple of hours. It's only a short little stint this morning. How'd you go, Tom? Too bad? Ten. Ten, good stuff. The adrenaline from hauling in multiple big fish single-handed must still be surging through Tom and his crewmates' veins, and they'll need it for the work yet to come. Anywhere between two and ten mackerel are coming on board. I'll throw them into these trays at the back and then they'll get into the cleaning process. So up here on this big white deck, it'll all be happening. Action stations pretty soon. This part of the job is something that Chef Cole knows a lot about. Beautiful look at fish. That's it, they're so fresh. Are they an oily fish or how do you they're cook them? Oil, oil content, yeah. So yeah. You don't even have to cook them. When they're this good, you know, they eat incredibly well raw. They cook oh, really? well, they smoke. They're, because of that oil content, they're really universal. It's all hands on deck for filleting the catch which has to be done at super fast speed, yet with what almost seems to be superhuman care and precision. The name of the game is to cut two clean fillets, free of any contamination from the contents of the gut cavity, and to have it all done in a flash. 
because delivering the freshest possible product requires neatly trimmed fillets to be washed and packed for the cold room within the minimum possible time from capture. And when you've got a lot of fish, I guess this is the hard yakka. How important is it to make sure you get a nice clean fillet? I'm really a gut happy, you're just another job. Yeah. See, I've just nicked a bit of the belly there. Yeah, right, okay. And you think about the pace they're doing it at, I think you're going to end up with about a quarter tonne of fillet this morning. Yeah, that's you incredible, know? isn't it? But that's a 60% return yeah. on the pool. That's amazing, yeah. isn't it? So, yeah, really getting good good value for money. Yeah, and so are the sharks. So are the sharks, yeah, look at this, eh? Wow. I guess one of the dangers being in there working is that you're, you're pulling these fish over the side, or a big shark wants to have a crack, he could actually almost take your hand off. Yeah, I've got some big scouts and that's all sharks. Wow. Yeah, your main tug of war quite a bit. Yeah. We're going to do this soon. Right, eh? They're pretty silly, aren't they? <laughs> you reckon you'll be up for it, mate? Yeah. You or me will be doing this at some point. Yeah. It's on. I'll do a nice slow one first so I can see exactly what they do. I, yeah, I can see the 100%. <laughs> now that I've set the benchmark for a TV presenter's speed and precision, let's see what a professional chef can do. There you go, nice. He does it every day of the week. He's, he's got a beautiful restaurant. He can get this incredible product and, and prepare it well. And it's a beautiful looking product that's packed in the boxes to be held in Wildcard's freezer room for pickup by the delivery ship that makes regular trips between Cairns and wherever they're fishing throughout the season. There you have it, the processing done. They've uh, cleaned all the fish, they've packed them all up in the boxes. Now they're thinking about going out again. And when they do, Colin and I will be with them to experience this kind of fishing from the sharp end. off the Wessel Islands in the top end, I'm fishing for mackerel with Dory Skipper Tom. And in another one of Wild Card's Dories, Chef Colin is with Boss Juanita Davey. But not right now, Juanita, because it's time for Cole to cook some of the catch for our dinner. Traditional landowner Terry Yumbabul has joined us with his wife and grandson, and we're all looking forward to some sensational tastes. How's this for a kitchen? Uh, not too bad, pretty good. What are you preparing? We've got some beautiful wild card Spanish mackerel there, some vegetables. We're going to blister all these out. We're going to make Spanish mackerel grilled over the open coals with a simple salsa rojo. Sounds really fancy. Salsa rojo. It's just a little bit of a Mexican taste. Some smoked chilies over there. We've got a little bit of Mexican oregano and cumin seed. We've got some cos hearts there. We're just going to grill those really, really quickly, hit them with some lime juice and some olive oil. It's been fantastic, hey? Learning so much from, from the crew here at Wildcard. I mean, uh, Bruce, and he's old up tonight. He's actually, I think he's got dressed up for he you tonight. He looks the part, doesn't he? Uh, uh, hey? How <laughs> good is this? And this is not a bung on either, is it? This is this how is it is. Uh, how much feeding do we have in this restaurant? <laughs> We've been very fortunate. We're also uh, here on, on Terry's lands. There he is. Yeah, <laughs> how are you doing, mate? Uh, Welcome to the restaurant. Uh, hello. <laughs> hello, how are you? Good to see you. Yeah. Very good. Well, thanks for, thanks for having us here on your, your beautiful land. It's a good part of the world. It is. We've known each other, you know, me and young Bruce here. Young Bruce, yeah. yeah. 
for a while. So yeah, Terry and I have got a wonderful arrangement, a, a, a contract for life, and that allows me to fish his traditional waters and also to conduct our tourism business here as well. And because we had such a crew, we've also got a beautiful little Red Emperor, one of the boys caught before, all folded up, ready to go. Now, you guys can do the honours there. You know what to do. In the coals. In the coals. In the coals. Grab the sauce. No, we'll... Yeah. Perfect. Okay, look at that. Those tomatoes are starting to blister. That's exactly what we're after there. Give it a good wax salt. Same again with a bit of pepper. And that's it, really. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to watch the heat travel up from the skin side here, and then we'll flip it over, and we'll give it another minute or so. And I'm going to give this sauce a bit of a stir down here. That's the garlic sauce that clearly made. All right, yeah, so you can see it's just started to come up. It's starting to rise up now. We've got yep. a couple of nice little char bars there from the, the grill without being uh, too aggressive. You know, you don't want those char marks to be too intense because you're going to get that really burnt flavour. Yeah. Tom's getting it on the end there. Yep. So that's what we're after there. We've got our little cos hearts here. Yep. A little dose of uh, olive oil, good whack of salt. Yep. How long do you reckon? A minute or so? Or... Yeah, a minute or so. Might look at getting our mackerel away. Yep. Yeah. It's all right, doesn't it? So the resting period's really important, hey? Very important. See our lettuces here. Oh, yeah. A little bit of char on them. I never thought you could char lettuce, you know? That's, that's fabulous. And once again, they're going to continue cooking as we take them off the grill. So okay. that might be time for them. What about the little red emperor? Oh, she's hot in there. Time to plate it up. Well, for the Mac, and I think because we've got a big group of people tonight, what we'll do is uh, slice it into nice chunks for oh, everybody to have a go. That. The big thing with that, too, is actually how the fish was handled this morning. It really comes through in the eating qualities of the yeah, fish. Yeah, that's amazing, isn't it? It starts from the minute that they bring that fish on board, they're quickly dispatched, and they're, they're iced down and packed within what, two hours, sort of thing. So it's incredible. It doesn't get any better. A bit more olive oil, a bit more lemon juice. And... Gosh, that looks good. All right, give it a crack. I'm going to get in there too. That looks good. All right, mate. Cheers. Oh, come and get it, guys. That'll it tastes do. fantastic. Oh, <laughs> look at this. It's all from your great work. Oh, cheers, mate. Mmm. How good is that? I'm happy with that. Mate, well done. Just one. Hey? Thank Brilliant. you. Brilliant. Thanks very much to Bruce and uh, Terry yep. and all the guys on the wild card. Well done, crew. Well done. Yeah. Oh, I did get that one in at the start. Ah, uh, right. This is the one. Couple of days Perfect. on the boat. morning after you've enjoyed a chef cooked beach dinner of Spanish mackerel on one of the Wessel Islands, what are you going to do? When you're staying on board a mackerel boat like the Wild Card, you go out for more. Well, it's a beautiful morning here. As you can see, we've got a little outrigger on this side which just spreads the line. Fish on here. Well, this is what it's all about up here. Early morning. We're up on the, the top end of the Wessel Islands and it's mackerel fever. There's birds working everywhere. There's tuna all about. There's also big Spanish mackerel up this way. Completely different fishing style than I'm used to, but I'm certainly looking forward to a cracker morning. Colin Barker is on the dory wild one with the real wild one of the fishing crew, their legendary boss, Juanita Davy. It's a total change from Cole's own boss duties back home as executive chef at the renowned Boathouse restaurant in Sydney's Blackwattle Bay. And he's loving every minute of it. And the line's running with him to 12 metres behind the boat. This one here's got a spoon on it, the one over here, two gang hooks, two big gang hooks, 
onto a garfish with a little skirt over the top. And I'm about to find out how challenging this kind of fishing can be in these waters. Because we're not the only hunters with a taste for Spanish mackerel. Oh! Wherever we're working, they're lurking. Oh, shucks. Tom has to work hard and fast to keep his fish ahead of those jaws. It's a tense contest of skill and determination versus pure aggression. And the mackerel's own athletic prowess plays its part as well. Until finally... Oh, well done. Oh. Yeah, awesome. And suddenly, I'm about to get my own direct lesson in what the pros call this part of their fishing grounds, Cape Carnage. Oh. Oh. That's a point to the other team. And I don't think it's even half a point to me. Bugger. Too quick for me. Another Spaniard strikes. Oh. And the relentless pressure's back on me in an instant. With that kind of size and speed against me, it's all over just as quickly. Cape Carnage, fish shark. Wow. Big enough to break me wow. off right through the wire trace. Wow. It's probably the, uh, oh. the best thing that happened. Oh, yeah, 100%. Wild is certainly the word for the way these men and women make their living. Well, as you can see, the other dories are around us. Wild one going this way. Going OK? Oh! <laughs> oh, no. Collins in the other boat with Juanita. They're working around similar areas. There's five dories out here at the moment, so everyone's having a crack. And I reckon that's more like a quarter of a point for Colin. That's just part of the game around here. All this frenetic action is a good, tangible indication of what fishery scientists tell us. That Spanish mackerel stocks in the Northern Territory and the Gulf of Carpentaria have recovered from overfishing by foreign vessels in the 1970s and 80s, and that these fisheries are at truly sustainable levels. So Bruce and Juanita and their band of boys and girls have a future to look forward to, and we can all enjoy our mackerel for many years to come. We're cruising right along these edges right here, big rock platforms. We're getting a, a bit more bait on the sounder, so there's a lot more bait walled up here, and obviously the predators are around. Can I keep ahead of those predators with my next hookup? I'm working hard at it with Tom coaching from the side. I succeed in getting a full point on the scoreboard. It feels like the final whistle of a grand final. There'll be plenty of stories to share when we're all back aboard the wild card. And I thought there was adrenaline in yesterday's fishing. Wow, that was an experience. Sharks everywhere. Crazy stuff out there. But uh, we got a few. All right. This one here. There's some of the some of the damage the sharks do. The Wessel Islands off the Northern Territory's Arnhem Land are a long way away from Blackwattle Bay in Sydney. That's where Colin Barker works as executive chef at the renowned Boathouse restaurant. And right now, I reckon I know where Cole would rather be. He's had a ball fishing with Juanita for the past few days, and now he's hauling them in with Tom. But you can't keep a good chef down, so it's goodbye wildcard and hello Boathouse to complete this week's journey from raw ocean to refined dinner plate.
I was always fascinated with food as a kid. From the age of five, six years old, I didn't want to be anything else but a chef. And I came to Sydney and I thought the hours in Sydney were bad, then I went to London. Incredible vibe, being surrounded with a bunch of people that are just so passionate about what they do. A couple of days after being back in Oz, a mate of mine rang and said, I'm working down at the boathouse at the moment, they need a sous chef. And the rest is history. Freshness, when it comes to all aspects of our game, is priority, and none more so than seafood. If you start off with a premium product, you can only win at the end result. Well, Cole, back to the real world, back at the boathouse. I mean, it's not a bad office you guys have got, but we've uh, been up at the Wessel Islands. Weren't they a special bunch of people? The wild ones, yeah, they definitely were. Now, we've ended up with some mackerel fillets. Some genuine Cape Carnage. Absolutely, Cape Carnage. What are you thinking about today? So we're going to go with the Spanish sort of theme today. We've got a, a romesco sauce over there. So it's just a bit of zing and a bit of colour. All right, well, let's get started. What we'll do is just a bit of oil on top. Just a light bit of oil on that skin there. Bit of a massage. So we're just a little bit of salt on both sides. We just gently pop that in. Yep. Really carefully so that we don't splash. And literally for us, we're just going to go straight into the oven now. Okay, so you're just crisping up that skin. We just, yeah, a little bit of heat at the start because we don't want to put too much colour on right now because it's going to continue to colour right. in the oven. Uh, that's our romesco sauce. Yep. All that sort of gear. And then uh, in here, we've just got some garlic that we've caramelised very, very gently. We'll grab her out now. A little bit of a look. It's been in there for about the six minute mark now. Only a little bit of butter there. And you'll see when we bring that fish over how that skin's behaved in that wow, pan. Wow, that's fantastic. It's a little bit of acidity. But literally, we don't want the fish to sit too long on that side in that pan. Okay, it's so going to just dry. keep on cooking. It's going to keep on cooking. It's ready to go, so. Plate her up. Yeah. Whew. All right, so really, you tell you what we'll do, we'll, uh, we'll cut that mackerel now. Wow, that's beautiful. We've got that little bit under through here. Yeah, we'll just get all chefy on you now. We've got our confit garlic here in a bit of olive oil, a bit of sherry vinegar. You know, that garlic has been cooked, it's super, super soft. We've cooked all that intense garlic flavour out of it. A few capers, a few almonds. Capers, yeah. This is a dehydrated tomato powder. Wow, brilliant. And we've just got a couple of globe artichokes here. A little bit of greenery. A little bit of greenery. Oh, this is just a little bit of fennel frond. So it's just got a nice anise sort of flavour. That's our completed dish. Well, I'll tell you what, this dish is looking amazing. You can serve this at your own table with a recipe on our website, seafoodescape.com or seafishfiles.com.au for more about the fascinating story of Spanish mackerel. I hope you've enjoyed the wild card experience as much as I have, and I look forward to taking you on another Seafood Escape real soon. Air North is the airline I fly with when I'm travelling around Australia. They've always flown across the top end, but with new flights to Perth and Melbourne, they're spreading their wings. So give them a try next time you fly.